Hello and welcome everyone. We are just about to get started, so let's rock and roll. Hello everyone, my name is Akua Kant and I am the head cheerleader for Magic and welcome to today's uh, Zoom recorded for new female coaches and consultants. So today we are looking at your success environment and I'm quite excited to do this topic because environment um, for me is a holistic thing. Um, it's really comprises of a number of different elements, which we're going to talk about in this uh, afternoon session. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the session today. So the agenda for this session, we are going to be following and following and talking about the following topics. So what does my environment consist of? How does my environment make me feel? What is in my environment that helps me? What do I need to change about my environment? That's an interesting topic too. What is my environment story? How can I change my environment story? Why, why you must surround yourself with people that inspire, motivate and challenge you. But of course, why, else would, you, why, why would you not do that? Um, feelings and making investments in yourself and ooh, yes, this is deep, but one we really need to get to grips with. And finally, mindset affirmations. So let's roll. So what does my environment consist of? So to me, I'm just going to explain that to you um, in this quote. Your environment is your physical environment, your mindset, and that which is greater than you. So um, your environment to me is holistic, is a holistic thing. You know, it's not just where you are in your home, your office, or whatever space that you choose to work uh, and study. Um, but it's also about your internal environment. So that's your mindset. Uh, it's also about, um, you know, what you do to feed your mindset um, and what and that, that, that which is greater than you. So that's, um, you know, you being part of this uh, world, this um, planet, this universe, um, and your um, connection to the things that are greater than you, whether, that it, that, whether that's, um, spiritual in faith or whether that's spiritual um, in any other sort of um, spiritual um, connection, um, whatever that, that may be. So it's really um, around the holistic uh, body, mind, um, and, um, you know, perspective of your uh, place uh, in the universe, whether that, that's spiritually as in faith or that's, um, you know, spiritually um, as in just, you know, a human being in this world. So number one, your physical environment is the place in which you work and study. So the things that are placed there and the things that are absent from, this, from that place are very important. So what do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is, you know, in the place that you work uh, or study, um, it's great to have things that remind you of your greatness and help you to be resilient and help you to be optimistic, solutions focused um, and really um, proactive. So that's what I mean by the things that are in the space that you work. And, and what's absent, you know, as I was just, just describing, you know, things that help you to be um, positive and motivated and proactive, um, you know, your space might be, um, for example, um, cluttered. It might not have um, things that inspire and motivate you. It may not contain a vision board. It may not have affirmations. It may not have um, things to help you to think um, in terms of powerful questions, because questions are really our friends in terms of helping us to get gain perspective, but also to open ourselves to um, learning, um, you know, having time to feel our feelings, but also to recognize that our feelings don't need to um, be in control of us, um, that we are there to definitely feel them um, and move through them, but we're also there, there to be mindful of that um, we don't always have to uh, believe them if they are our feelings that don't serve our greatest good. So your mindset is your internal beliefs, thoughts, um, and neural pathways which are wired in. Um, 
widen into ways that serve you or ways that can be improved. So here I'm talking about obviously um, your mindset, um, what you think. So, you know, are you thinking, um, you know, open and optimistic thoughts? Or are you thinking closed thoughts um, and thoughts um, of the inner, inner critic or saboteur? Um, and, you know, there definitely 110 ways you can uh, improve your mindset. There were affirmations, uh, meditation, um, you know, a number of different visualization techniques. Um, but definitely um, feeding your mindset environment is super important. And then finally, that which is greater than you is your purpose. You know, your conception of your place in the universe, as we discussed, whether that's a, a spiritual as in faith or a spiritual as in, you know, your wider um, purpose for being and your connection to the world and the planet at large. Ooh, big questions there. <laughs> so how does my environment make me feel? Being in an environment where you feel aligned physically, mentally, emotionally can make all the difference in your willingness to get past your discomfort. I'm going to read that again. Being in an environment where you feel aligned physically, mentally, emotionally can make all the difference in your willingness to get past your discomfort. Yes. So ladies, 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 um, your, journey to, your journey to transformation um, is going to be one that is, you know, going to have some discomforting moments. Um, and it, it is from that discomfort we get growth um, and that we really become the woman that we want to be to um, achieve our greatest goals, desires and dreams. Um, and if there's, there's no discomfort, um, there definitely will be um, because, you know, even if you enjoy what you do and you're excited to, um, to uh, make your impact in the world, there'll be elements of being in the entrepreneurial space which will be um, challenging and um, uncomfortable for you, but that's okay. You know, it's all within the, the mindset of learning, um, growing, um, practicing, and really getting that data and that insight to be able to push past that discomfort um, and know that just because you feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable doesn't mean it's wrong, we shouldn't be doing it. Uh, it just means that it's something that we haven't done before and it's new to us, but we must definitely, um, you know, be in spaces that encourage us to push past that discomfort, be in that space, that encourage us to try it in different ways um, and be in that space that you know allows us to feel uh, vulnerable um, and when we have a moment to allow us to reflect uh, and then to um, move forward um, with that growth and that learning attitude. So um, how we feel about any of our environments can affect what we do and what we don't do and it's it's really important to think about um, what we don't do because what we don't do um, is really telling. Um, and that is where we might need to face discomfort. We may need to um, try things a different way. We may need to um, really unpick some uh, beliefs that we have, which aren't, serve, which aren't serving us. Um, you know, or we might need to reach out um, and get some help and assistance uh, in moving forward if we're feeling a bit stuck. So uh, are your environment set up so that you can, one, be solutions focused, two, think clearly, and three, be inspired. I think all of these things are really important um, in your environment to help you to really be um, proactive, optimistic, um, and successful. So how are you maintaining your environments to enable you to enable peak performance? What actions are you taking daily to nurture the right environment where you can thrive? So it's seems important that, um, you know, we think of all of our environments and we think about what helps them help them to be in really um, peak condition. If you think about a physical environment, is it decluttering? Is it putting up things that inspire us? You know, is it, you know, having certain smells um, around us in our um, mental environment or internal environment? You know, is it those affirmations, meditation, um, connection to spirituality um, and other things? You know, what is it that we need to nurture to help us to thrive in all of the environments that create that holistic picture of um, the environments that we need to enable us to be, um, you know, fully um, functioning um, and to really be proactive. So, you know, that again also includes, you know, you know, taking exercise, um, walks and breaks, um, and you know, looking after your body in terms of obviously being healthy, uh, what you eat, um, you know, and um, yeah, how you manage um, your uh, environments um, holistically uh, to enable you to um, be your best self. 
So what is in my environment that helps me? Yes, we want to, to have things in our environment that help us. I mean, as I was saying, I'm a super um, believer of having, you know, a vision board with things that inspire you and motivate you and that you're working towards, or even a wins board, again, that helps you celebrate your success, but also to remind you of successes that you've had and successes that you're yet to have. Um, so are you aware of how your environment impacts you? Are you actively or passively tending to it? What's one thing that you would um, do that you, so, that, so that you can improve your environment? So um, have you considered the power, this power question? Does my environment help or hinder me? So as we've been, talk, we've been talking about, we've been you know, unpacking some of the different um, elements to your environment in a, from a holistic perspective, you know, being physical, um, mental, um, spiritual, um, you know, and all of those things. So um, have you created an environment that allows you to progress, um, that allows you to see your progress and your wins, as I was just discussing, whether that's having a wins board or a vision board um, that inspires you, uh, you know, you might have pictures, you might have images, you might have sounds, smells, um, objects. Um, what about that helps you to solve problems and that helps you to believe that you can handle anything? So with these um, last two points about problem solving um, and handling anything, absolutely you can 100% ladies, of course you can, yes. Um, but to do that, it's really about thinking about powerful questions, um, but also um, putting a break on our emotions that don't serve us is super helpful. So, um, you know, undertaking breathing techniques is really helpful, going for a walk, um, exercising and shifting your energy, all really powerful, powerful things um, helping you to problem solve um, and to know that you can handle anything. So have you audited your environment recently? What's working um, and what's not? Um, and now is a great time to change it so that it serves you. You know, don't delay. Um, I know that it can be really um, challenging sometimes to tackle some of those things that have been lingering and that just aren't working for us. Um, and we just kind of feel drained by them, but in not tackling them, um, we're letting them sap our energy. Um, and we're not actually gonna be able to be able to move forward practically. So um, as much as it feels uncomfortable, but we've got to get, you know, really um, super focused on um, moving through that, that discomfort um, and tackling those things that um, are just open source um, to help us to move forward and to really, um, again, go back to habit number one, being proactive um, and controlling the things that are within your gift to control. And that is yourself, that's you. So please ladies, um, be proactive um, and by all means, you know, have that moment. But once that moment is done, we want to you know, get back um, out there, we need to reach out to our friends, peers, coaches, mentors, um, allies, you know, partner, um, and we need to, you know, ask that, that support, um, and we also need to challenge ourselves to break free from um, the things that don't serve us, um, you know, to acknowledge that what has gone past, um, and then use that as data and insight and learning uh, to, move, to move forward and to spring forward um, into our bright and amazing and abundant future. So what do you need, what do I need to change about my environment? So the toughest thing is to be really self-aware and recognize when you are complicit in your own lack of progress. I'm gonna read that again. The toughest thing is to be really self-aware and recognize when we are complicit in our own lack of progress, when we are not making choices, procrastinating and letting the current circumstances seem like the only one possible when that's not true. There are always many possibilities. So when we are not making choices, procrastinating, and letting the current circumstance seem like the only one possible, when that's not true, there are always possibilities. So here, I'm gonna put my hand up as well. Um, you know, ladies, let's get real. Sometimes, you know, we have um, issues that are just hanging around um, in our lives and in our minds, um, and we are complicit in not tackling them. Um, and we are, you know, the ones stopping ourselves from making progress, from, you know, um, being proactive um, and letting those things um, have an unnecessary power over us. Um, as I said, you know, we really have to be mindful about what we feel in our minds as the emotions that we allow to, that we allow um, to overcome us. Um, and when we get into those states, recognizing and being self-aware 
um, and actually um, seeking to be proactive and shift our energy, our feelings and our emotions um, to ones that serve us and, and going to a process and having tools to help us to do that. So as I said, breathing can be quite powerful, going for a walk, um, exercising, um, you know, yoga um, and, and meditation. And there are many things, there are many tools that can help you in this aspect, but it's really um, important to be mindful um, and to employ them um, at the right time um, to really help us to move forward. So we need to look at um, the seemingly innocent things we allow to persist in our environments. Uh, that need to be changed, but we're ignoring. So as I said, you know, we have those environments in our mind, in our physical space, um, and, you know, how we are um, in what we are doing to maintain those environments. And if we're ignoring things, then we need to um, have a time out with ourselves um, and not to be complicit in the lack of progress and, you know, step up um, and to tackle it. Um, but, you know, we need to get, get overwhelmed. We need to take it slow and steady, but we need to recognize that we ourselves are the problem. Um, and then we need to take one small area, start with that, uh, make progress, and then move on to the next and on to the next and on to the next and so on and so forth. So um, you have a choice as to whether you keep the same environment that hasn't gotten you the results that you desire. That's right, again, you know, you have the choice as to whether you keep the same environment that hasn't gotten you the results that you desire. So, you know, the old um, saying, you know, um, if you keep doing the same things, um, you know, you always want to get what you've always gotten. So it, it's, it's upon us uh, to, to change our environments, to make them help us to thrive. I mean, if we're not thriving and we're not getting the results that we want, then we ourselves must look to ourselves to take that action, to shift, to transform, to modify it and to adjust. So what is my environment story? So we all have choices to make in life. Understanding your values, beliefs, and creating an environment for success is absolutely 100% vital to help you to move forward. And we want that forward momentum. You know, we want us to keep moving forward little by little, bit by bit, you know, day by day. And as I said before, it's in those daily habits, who you surround yourself with, um, and how you hold yourself accountable, and how you're in spaces, that will also support you um, in being accountable to yourself. So your environment story comprises of your attitude to your environments, your beliefs about your control over your environments um, and what you were raised to believe about your environment. So as I have said before, we're not raised in a vacuum, you know, we are um, influenced by our communities, our up upbringing, uh, parents, partners, uh, peers, um, et cetera. Um, but in so acknowledging those things, we have the choice um, to think about what serves us um, and to really be mindful that, you know, not everyone wants to make the choices, to be optimistic, to be solutions focused, um, and to really see the opportunities that, that are out there for us, should we um, so wish to um, walk forward, move forward, um, and to progress proactively with, you know, um, transitioning in your career, to becoming a coach or consultant, um, transitioning, transitioning to becoming a businesswoman, transitioning to be your best self, transitioning to be that magnificent, amazing woman that you already are, um, but really seeing it and choosing to uh, live it, um, take up that space um, and definitely embody it. Come on, ladies, let, let's do this. So uh, write down and reflect on uh, what does having the right environment for success mean uh, to you. So that is something that you need to reflect upon. You know, you will know um, personally what makes you thrive. Um, and it's important for you to think about that um, and to create an environment that allows you to, allows you to do so. Um, finally, is your environment story helping or harming you? And if it's harming you, then obviously you need to change the story and you need to start small. So, um, you know, acknowledge where you are with that story rewrite that story to one that serves you and also put in place the things in your environments that help you to survive. So you must surround yourself with people that inspire, motivate and challenge you. One more time. You must surround yourself with people that inspire, motivate and challenge you. So the stories we tell ourselves are powerful. So tell yourself a story that serves your greatest interests. 
I mean, really, it sounds simple, but it is yet so powerful. You know, tell yourself the right stories. Tell yourself the stories that serve your interest. Um, and tell yourself the stories that see you is, as your future self, um, you know, in your magnificence and your glory. You're already magnificent. You already have the magic. But, you know, we are evolving people, um, evolving women, women who are um, forward thinking, women who have wisdom, who have skills, who have knowledge, you know, and you have so much within us. But, you know, sometimes it takes um, being in the spaces and the groups um, that allow you to um, really be recognized and seen and heard. Not only that, also, um, you know, they are there to lift you up and to see what you don't see. You know, we all have blind spots. Um, and, you know, even, even myself, you know, I've, I've really benefited from being in spaces and groups um, that have helped me to, um, you know, to grow, to learn, but also to, um, to see what I don't see. Because obviously, you know, you can only see um, so much of yourself and you're, you're out there and you're doing a great job. And that's good though. But what's really um, even more impactful is others seeing you in your magnificence and your, your glory um, and them also um, you know, sharing with you um, what you're not seeing and for you to reflect um, and to see how that could also serve you to um, really use that to your um, greatest good um, and to create the abundance and the life that you want to live. So write a new environment story. Give your environment a different meaning and get in your why. You know, your why is so important. You know, what does it mean to you um, to be impactful, to um, live in the world and create the life um, that you desire and you want to live? It's all there for you, but you have to do the doing and be proactive. Um, and you have to be in the space and create the environments for you that help you thrive and to be successful. So feelings and making investments in yourself. Ah, I know the woman is looking really happy, like, oh my gosh, why? Um, you should be happy, um, you know, because you are the prize. So remember that and consider that when you think about investing in yourself, it's giving yourself a gift. You know, you're going to be happy. Everyone's happy when they get gifts, right? Yeah. So investing yourself is, is a gift. And I know I'm going to acknowledge here the real truth about it. Um, it can sometimes feel scary. I totally get that. And I've totally been there. But what I say to that is that you have to realize that, you know, what you're doing so far has only got you so far. And that's great. And that's good. But if you want to go further, go together and go faster with like-minded people. Um, I can tell you from my own experience that that really has, I mean, a, a huge, massive difference um, to my progress, um, the women that I am and the women that I am becoming. Um, and I can only tell you that um, it's been a real gift. Uh, and yes, you know, I haven't always had, um, you know, the investment all there to do all the things that I want to invest in, but I have been purposeful. I have been proactive. I've spoken to relevant people uh, about these opportunities um, and I have, you know, created, um, you know, pathways um, to make what I need happen. And that's not talking about, you know, um, doing things that are unsustainable or that are, um, you know, going to harm you in any way. You know, it's thinking um, creatively, it's being solutions focused, but it's also about, you know, having priorities um, and choosing to make um, hard decisions about how you invest um, your money um, and how you, um, you know, um, commit to, um, you know, different um, investment options that, that may be available to you depending on what it is that you want to invest in. But I can tell you that, you know, once you have um, invested in the right thing for you, and I think, say, it's definitely worth doing the due, due diligence. You know, I don't say, suggest that you, you invest in anything lightly. I suggest that, you know, you make sure that it's, it's the right thing for you. But once it is and you're convinced, then if the investment is anything that's, that's holding you back, have that conversation about how you can um, be creative in, um, you know, um, being able to um, meet that investment um, and in different ways that you could do so. So you'll definitely feel um, things of joy and happiness and that it's priceless. Um, and you can never put a price on your worth because you are priceless. So yes, feel joyful when you think about investing in yourself. Um, and even if you feel a little bit anxious, know that in the end, if you've done your due diligence, I mean, you are sure that it's right for you. Um, it will be right. Uh, and it will definitely 
um, pay dividends to you in so many ways that you have yet to um, even feel, um, behold, or to, um, to um, I don't even, what is the word I'm searching for? Um, experience is the word I'm searching for. And yes, what fabulous smile that she has. And what's my too? <laughs> so just to, before we wrap it up, uh, I am going to do some mindset affirmations. So choose the mindset affirmations that serve you. So I'm open to wonderful possibilities. And I'm taking both steps for my transition to become a coach or consultant. I can excel in so much more. And I believe in my ability to gain the knowledge I need to create the life that to create the life I desire. I'm committed to taking steps towards creating my biggest impact professionally, personally, and for the world. I am open to wonderful possibilities and I'm taking bold steps. It's my transition to become a coach or a consultant. I can excel in so much more and I believe in my ability to gain the knowledge I need to create the life I desire. I'm committed to taking steps towards creating my biggest impact professionally, personally, and for the world. I release all negative energy towards building confidence in myself and my ability to succeed in my career. I release all negative energy towards building confidence in myself and my ability to succeed in my career. I understand that I must be intentional, proactive, and surround myself with the people that motivate, inspire, inspire me to build my biggest career dreams. I understand that I must be intentional, proactive, and surround myself with the people that motivate and inspire me to build my biggest career dreams. I am open to learning and to developing a testing mindset. I embrace failure as part of my journey to success. I am open to learning and to developing a testing mindset. I embrace failure as part of my journey to success. And yes, definitely turn your, your goals into actions. So of course you are invited to the Creator Cohort um, for the senior female professional to coach or consultant. And what do you get? You obviously get me. Um, I am energetic and I'm so super delighted to help you to build your mindset, um, give you tools for action and implementation, help you to build the habits that you need um, daily, start with those fantastic positive morning routines, but also um, to get a holistic approach to other programs. So we start by looking at, you know, how are you looking after yourself? Because being in business, being in business is really about um, taking care of yourself and then obviously providing your service to your customers and your clients. But if you're not healthy and well, you cannot provide um, that service to your um, customers or clients and you cannot create that wealth and abundance that you desire in your life. So you will get uh, training modules that we adapted to the group's needs. And that's because this is the creator cohort. And that means we are co-creating this course together. So I obviously will create um, program um, materials for you to learn um, and for you to um, give me feedback on but also um, I will use that feedback to dynamically, dynamically change um, the course to ensure that you're getting um, everything that I need that everything that you need to um, really create the solid foundations to transition transition to become a coach or a consultant so um, what's really important here is that there will be weekly coaching uh, with implementation and training sessions an awesome community of women who are all working together to transition towards becoming coaches or consultants. So, you know, having that um, group of accountability is so important. Having other peers going through the same journey, as well as myself, cheering you on, helping you to, um, you know, learn, learn the lessons, to grow, to um, be vulnerable, but to also be um, supported and picked up, you know, when things are tough. Because, you know, ultimately they're going to be days um, when it gets a bit challenging, but we're here to support you, to help you through your different perspective, um, and to also to help you know that tomorrow is a new day. Um, and yes, you can. So always remember and, and affirm, I'm able to handle any career circumstance or situation with resilience, competence, and compassion for myself. I am able to handle any career circumstance or situation with resilience, competence, and compassion for myself. So thank you so much for joining me this afternoon for today's recorded session. I really do hope that you found it a valuable um, session. Yeah, environment is um, a holistic piece. So mind, body, spirit, 
um, physical and environment. And as we talked about, we really do we need to be um, proactive and mindful about creating the environments that help us to thrive. So really do think about what is your environment story? Um, how can you change that? And how can you look at your environment holistically through the different uh, dimensions I talked about in the session? Um, and to uh, deal with anything that is uh, left undealt with um, and to, you know, really give yourself the space to room, space and room to grow, but also um, for you to uh, be solutions focused um, and to, um, you know, create um, the environment that helps you to, to thrive and to be um, successful and proactive and to move forward. Um, so that is all I have to say for today. Um, please do reach out um, on LinkedIn or uh, via the list. Um, I very much look forward to your feedback. I hope you have a great uh, day. Uh, and I look forward to engaging with you um, and answering any questions that you ha may have. Please do reach out um, if you have any questions um, around uh, the program or um, working with me in general. All right, well, take care and hope to see you soon. Oh, um, to join us next week, it'll be Friday at 2 p.m. So please do join us live for our next um, session, which includes the Q&A. All right, take care. Bye now.